This is, this is, this is. Hey, hey, hey. All right, Jeff. 90 pound wuss. <laughs> Wrapped dead monkeys. What else? Suffering in the hideous thieves. Suff- Jeff suffering. Dry bones spelled. Z- it's, it's just suffering. No just Jeff suffering. suffering. But I did. Well, no, for a but while. that's. How, you go by yes. Jeff suffering. That That's the moniker that ended up with the band title, Suffering in the Hideous Thieves. At the time when I started that band, I was way into Nick Crime in the City Solution, um, shit like that. And suddenly it made sense. You know, I was uh, like involved in church and all that stuff so suffering and the hideous thieves like jesus on the cross or some shit is that what it was uh i mean it was mostly me and then having a cool name for the band which is the hideous thieves so yeah. um but yeah i i always sort of also like that because you could you could say that so 90 pound wuss <laughs> came back you did some shows you played bremerton washington which was excellent uh, we have a my, record coming out from that. You did my podcast. You, you have a live record coming out? Yeah, it's a limited edition live LP from the um, Tracy Ten Theater. We, uh, it's mastered. The art's being worked on right now. It's part of a series. Amazing. Of some, um, a, a series of this uh, record label in Florida called DCXPC. And okay. they, they do live recordings of punk bands and ska bands. And uh, they have... Our friends Middle Age Queers did a release for him, and they're all limited, like 100, 200 copies. Um, so we're doing like a, we're trying to get it sort of this like uh, blue uh, and white marble looking cool. vinyl. And then the. Uh, Do you know when that's coming? We don't yet. I'm waiting for the artwork to be finished. And as soon as that, then I will have a release date because we'll be able to send it off and then we'll get all that. But, you know, since it's limited and a small run, it'll probably be like the end of this year wait to push it off to the next year so we can the idea would be to play a show yeah for that release again and um in all honesty we yeah. haven't actually played music together you, since furnace fest you so. gotta hype some yeah you, know, you gotta have some hype to like get people to to buy you know your record and yeah 100 percent. yeah i don't know how you guys do that but and you haven't played since furnace fest furnace fest was a lot of fun you guys uh i didn't see your set at furnace fest but i saw photos i saw video it looked special. It looked really cool. It was special. Yeah, it was great. I think I think that the Tracy Ten Theater, since it was the actual first show mm-hmm. that we played after decades, mm-hmm. is the uh, um, that's the one. I'm glad we captured it. There's a few songs we decided not to put on it, but for the most part, it's the same set. And we're gonna release it in conjunction with um, on YouTube with YouTube videos, sort of as singles. Um, and some like of the- just one song, like put it out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And at the same time, probably there will be a few that come out before the full release comes out digitally. So, like the first one's going to be some uh, misplaced society slash Desantis must break, which is how we <laughs> change something must break. So, um, it's starting to not get very timely, but he's still a politician, so it works. Still a politician. Yeah. I mean, politicians are easy to rail against for sure because they're all terrible. You can just yeah. insert somebody and be like, you can find something <laughs> to to complain about. So I love it. They're all pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> you can you can talk talk all the shit about anybody. I don't care. Like I'm I'm against everybody. Well, they're public. <laughs> I'm for you. <laughs> they're public figureheads. You know I'm what against I'm saying? All, I'm against all these knuckleheads out there trying to tell us what <laughs> what to do and not doing it themselves. Totally. Just do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, which is basically the politician and the preacher. I I've always had a problem with that. You know, I mean, totally. you know, I, I've been like, I feel like I'm I'm like this rebellious kid still when I'm like against the government and like don't tell me what to do. This that that's just how I how I've always been. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just I'm not negative. I'm I've I feel good about life. Life is, you know, there are things Hold that on, need Mike to be Carrera fixed. Just said he's not negative. I'm not negative. <laughs> Come on, really. It seems you seem so negative. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> you're one of the most positive people, dude. Like, right, right, like, right, right. It's so great. Like, uh, you and fucking Toby. Um, <laughs> what's from the I hardcore? Think, band, I don't know dude. what it is. You guys are like so like, positive. It's awesome. To what be is around. it? What is it? Because I'm not always positive, but like I try to put forth a positive attitude when I'm talking to people in public. You know, and but but you wake up you're tired you're like ah, i went to bed too late getting up too early 
uh, whatever I did yesterday, now my back hurts. I mean, there's those days. Yeah, totally. But you're, you're nobody, pretty nobody, real. Nobody, nobody wants to hear that. So I'm not always completely real because I'm also not like... Being completely real would be like telling everybody, oh, did you hear about my stubbed toe? You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I do talk about like squirrels in my house and like... like the other day like the last podcast uh the cover was i saw that a spider and a toilet paper roll i saw that photo yeah i screamed yeah. L- like a girl it was right in there spiders aren't your favorite and insect, I, huh? well that's the thing is i don't mind spiders <laughs> I, i've i've come a long way like if i've changed at all i've changed for the better when it comes to spiders okay. like i'll let spiders live i'll i let this spider live in our kitchen windowsill it was outside, so I was like, yeah, whatever. I just let it live for like the whole, t- you know, for three months. Wow. As soon as my wife comes back to Bremerton and, and sees that, she's like, you didn't you didn't get rid of that? That was here when I left. <laughs> Which is like, I've been watching it every day. It's like, yeah, my, you know, I actually I got do, the dogs I look and I got the it. spider. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? Spencer the spider, what's going on, man? So That's awesome. he's named it. See, see, Spencer. I just named it just now, just now. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, oh, yeah. I, I guess I get weird. I, I, I let some weirdness out a little bit on, on the socials, but for the most part, it's mostly just stories, mostly. Um, and then it, I can't help it if a squirrel's in my house. I, I came back from a trip and I walked into my house. And I was like, there's something then happening upstairs i could hear something went up into my room and there's a squirrel and it's just cruising around in there i'm like how long have you been in here the window is open um long story short i it's like all right spencer let's go <laughs> spencer the spider everybody spencer the squirrel. Yeah, yeah it's spencer just the squirrel too uh so yeah you, you chased it. how'd you get it out I I op I oh okay now that I remember the window was not open the window was closed I went and I was filming and I opened the window and I it's one of those old school like you push the window out yeah what's that like a Dutch oven no that's something else <laughs> <laughs> something like that that's something but totally else different so but yeah you push it, the it window out, out. Yeah. yeah it goes out and then you know you you have this little it's very it's like the original window of the house. Okay. From like 1914 or something. So anyway, do that. And then I'm like, there you go, squirrel. And the squirrel goes, doop, 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 and goes right out. And then when it went down, it was on the on the railing, looked back up at me and was like waving its tail like crazy oh. and yelling like, kee, 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 you think, ee, Yeah, he was mad at you. Yeah, it was in pissed. Your house. Yeah, it was pissed. It was like, I was enjoying your bedroom. Yeah. I my bedroom. Cool. Squatter's rights. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about squatters rights? rights by the way because you hear about like people that that own a house and they never even move in because there's squatters in yeah, there that's crazy i've heard these that's horror crazy stories that don't sound right at all and you, i'm like how can that how can the police not actually take care of someone's personal property and remove these people like by force like i like it seems like and i'm not saying force with guns or anything i'm just saying like right like you can put them down and drag them out if they need or, to. Or it, I think citizens should be allowed to take care of their own property. But, I know that's a little bit anarchy, but honestly, sometimes it's it's the better way to go. I don't think you should just kill the, per- the people, but well, that's, if they yeah. won't leave, I think what do you, you do? should be able to somehow remove them from the premises with a bit of force. I think that that's all right because it's, I mean, here's the problem. I think you could differentiate and have different rules or regulations or the way that you just think about it and treat people. If there's a freaking abandoned building right, or like a corporate owned space that isn't being used, to me, who freaking cares? But somebody right. else is working class because the majority of America is low class at this point. There's either low class and then there's billionaires, it seems, at, at this yeah. point. So we're all low class. <clears throat> so anyways... We, we work hard. <laughs> I would say I'm low class, time. but maybe middle class. For, okay, I'll for, say for low America. class. But yeah, but we work hard all the time. Sure. To, to in of order course. to like barely pay our bills. I mean, obviously, I live in Seattle, so I am technically I would be middle class too. I can afford a mortgage. It just costs and, a lot yeah, to live there, so you don't have I a lot left over, right? I don't have anything. I mean, left that's over. the thing is, like, I'm 
I'm pretty liberal when it comes to I want people to be free to make the decisions that they want to make. I want people to not get screwed over by the government, by local principalities or local or, or you know the, the federal government. But when it comes to personal property, that that's where I'm a little bit more libertarian. Where when it comes to like, hey, just don't mess with somebody's stuff or their thing they built. And the fact that it's not fair that they have that, maybe that's a different conversation because everything's individual. I mean, er, right? yeah, my line's going to cross at uh, corporations and yep. large structured entities like uh, um, entities. Yes. Who <laughs> I hate entities. <laughs> entities meaning various <laughs> uh, business organizations that have sent themselves up to exist as a person, essentially, because a lot of those corporations and larger companies are treated almost like they're people with when it comes to rights sure and i just don't i just don't think that that's uh absolutely when uh the uh supreme, human rights are better than corporate rights yeah the su- supreme court ruled that corporations were people yeah they could vote yeah that's messed up they could they could vote with dollars they well, and they been do. Doing they've been doing that a long time, time but yeah. they could now legally it's like oh now it's just even easier and you, there's less rigmarole that they have to go through to do that it's so interesting that people will pay people meaning because corporations are people will will pay millions of dollars to to change a law to you know to these politicians to these lobbyist firms millions of dollars when they could just probably pay their workers a little bit more Spend that millions of dollars there yeah. and have a better, you know, like, but. I mean, a billion's a lot of They just of want money. more. They just want more. It doesn't even make any sense. Like, a billion dollars doesn't make any, you can't spend that. Like, that. that's just not even, that's so much money. And it's so weird that there's even a discrepancy. Like, like who cares? Like, after, after if, if you're like a billionaire, you should just like, you know, that there's that meme, a talk, you should just like get a, uh. A certificate that says I won capitalism. Yeah. And then that's it. No more money for you. I won capitalism. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, I mean, like, that's so absurd. Like, all that could, if I'm all for the ideas, the ideas, right? Like, how things work, I am not that person. So, whatever. But ideally, I think freaking <laughs> water, food, shelter, because most people, you know, throughout human history make their own shelter, but shelter, so a house. Mm-hmm. Um, I think education and I think uh, health care, I think those are all actually human rights. I mean, in my opinion. Sure. I mean, uh, you have the right to it, maybe not to somebody giving it to you for free, but I think... With the amount that we pay in taxes in this country, well, nobody should be homeless. Could a, we could a, we could afford health care, universal health care. Yeah, and and nobody should really be homeless. There should be options for people. Right? Because think about it: Just where we live in Washington, houses, let them live in it. There you go. In Washington, <laughs> we live in Washington. It's cold in the winter. Yeah, that is not. I mean, people say there's like n- most. There's there's some people that choose to be homeless because they want to be vagrants. That's, Here's the problem. That's the problem different is, than again, homelessness. That's like a lifestyle. Sure. But most people who there's people with plenty of people with jobs with all sorts of stuff. They're freaking human beings. Not everybody's a drug addict, and even drug addicts are human beings. There's got to be a better way to deal with this stuff. A lot of them are rough, mentally man. unstable and crazy, and, some. And, and definitely on drugs. Uh, not all of them, but it makes it hard to like show up regularly to be a normal part of society but i think really the problem is the entities because the entities entities are the the problem so the entities are giving money to people these ceo type Mm -hmm. non-profit runners and they're 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 taking all this money and then it doesn't solve the problem because if they solve the problem they wouldn't get any more money so they're just getting like this like huge salaries seattle is one of the worst seattle has the local politics are pretty uh, bad often but they oftentimes do some really cool stuff too like uh when the well, like when they shut down capitol hill and like wouldn't let a normal citizen walk through oh no. <laughs> during covid uh, what was that chop 
Yeah, but it wasn't. It what was, do you think of Chop? What was what was Chop? Did you go down? Yeah, it was like a big hippie love fest, dude. It was, was it really? Like, <laughs> like, it wasn't no like way. at nighttime. It got a little bit freaky because there was lots of stuff. But most of the people were like, there was vendors set up, yeah, tables set up. Like it was like a street fair. So you only heard about the bad things happening. Well, probably. and and most of the stuff from that that I've seen, uh, in my opinion, more of like Fox News and some other places like that, more conservative. News sources were pitching it in a way that's like not even like no, that's not how it was. Like maybe like I don't even think that half the pictures that you'd see on the news were like from some other riot somewhere else, not even Seattle. Like it wasn't it wasn't really right. It's all fake news, man. It was all really just like there there was a couple things that happened that were lame because basically the police vacated from the the police station was on Capitol Hills right across the street. It vacated People got scared. Some people left, like all this stuff. They basically left it alone, but there was people there. It was like, it really was anarchy. Like the goods, because there's a lot of good ideas that are pertinent to not having a government lord over you. Um, So anarchy, I used to be a free market anarchist most of my life. And um, I've waffled back and forth at times between socialism and and communism sort of forms of anarchy um but the no control no gods no government kind of thing is like definitely something that's as much as the no gods might be in question for my conversation from my past and everything it's still the principle of not letting people lord over you yeah but the, the the underlying things with that for most people that are anarchists are essentially the idea of love your neighbor as yourself which like you know jesus right. spoke about right sure, sure and christians say that they believe that and yet they're the ones that want to close off borders that you know the the jesus of the bible there was no borders it didn't really matter he he didn't really give a crap about the government at all like <laughs> there's a few things paul said that could lead you to those conclusions so to me anarchy even though it's godless actually practices the ways of jesus a lot more in theory for most anarchists they don't just want mayhem and chaos right they want to this idea to practice like uh being human along with other humans in a way that um is always trying to encourage the other and to um move forward together in a better society not yeah if you have like a mutual respect because you walk down the street here and you you reasonably can can assume they're not going to stab you now and again. Somebody will get stabbed here on the streets in Burberton. Oh, totally. It happens. Yeah. But uh, so I'm always a little wary of just, you know, just pay attention. But at the same time, it's like law or no law. If you're crazy or you're out of your mind, some in some way, it can be dangerous. Yeah. What does it matter? Right. So that, that's the, that's the less likely scenario though. I mean, it is for the, the most likely. part, most people perfectly nice. They want, they don't want any trouble. Like, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any altercations. Totally. So that's anarchy right there. It's like you can, I, I could see anarchy working in that way. I feel like, sure, there's governments, but if, if you look back to like the, the Little House on the Prairie days or whatever, you know, like the Old West, there was laws, but like you kind of just did what you did. And sometimes you got caught and shot for it, hanged, whatever, or you made out, right? But <laughs> I watch a lot of westerns. That's but, good. Did you watch Westworld? Uh, I watched the, the first season, Western. the first season of Westworld. It. it got weird after that. I didn't have time to like pay, like keep in, like this is too crazy. Was there a time in your life ever when you uh, had time? When I mean, you had time to watch movies or, or on the road it when we were constantly touring? I would watch a lot more movies and stuff because yeah. you know how people are always like, "Have you seen this show? Have you seen this show?" I was like that for a number of years of my life, and since I've been playing music again, it's like virtually gone. Like I'm just like, I don't fucking care. I don't really have time for that because. Yeah. Like I barely have time to go to work and then come home and like, you know, maybe once, maybe twice a week, I get a time to like lock myself in my room, pick up my bass or my guitar, turn on my computer, plug into that interface and just do something right. Like, uh, 
Um, and it's been so encouraging just being able to have that again that I feel this thing of like, it's different now because I, I don't, there's, there's zero to prove at this point in my life. I'm like, I'm like, you know, yeah. like I, I'm, I don't have to be like, I guess in the past you'd get into sort of the thing that you were into and then you liked it so much so that you sort of adopted those cultures or those attitudes or whatever. And now I'm like, man, I like a lot of things and all the things that I like, yeah. they can be the same fucking thing in a song. <laughs> it's that great. is interesting how it, it is like. When we were young, it was all about your identity and what your your niche was, like what your like thing was, and that still exists here today. Like, there's some people that are super into motocross, but guaranteed, those people like other things. Everybody always did like other yeah, things. Totally. We just didn't realize 100%. it, right? Yeah. And now you're like, oh yeah, now I, I can incorporate all of this into everything I do, or or not, or not, yeah. or not. There's no rules, uh, and the rules that exist are going to be broken if they haven't already been. I mean, it's just like, I tried to explain to my daughter, she's 11. Uh, I was trying to give her the, there's laws, there's rules. Some of those laws are perfectly good. Like don't murder, don't steal, don't, you know, um, there's some like nitpicky rules that maybe aren't as important. Uh, it's kind of hard. Like you don't want to like, don't listen to anything anybody tells you. Don't follow the rules. No, but you, you also say have that. To, like, like but you things kinda... like the speed limit. Yeah. Like stuff like that. Like usually it's there with a good intent. But in Seattle right now, the speed limit everywhere is 25. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, that's too. And so it's that's like crazy. it's it's one of those things. Like that rule is so arbitrary and it has more to do with trying to get people to just be safe drivers. That's sure. It. Yeah. So like, fuck it. If you break it, you'll probably have to pay a fine. But it doesn't do anything. Well, what I told her was, is mo uh, most of the people you hear about that are super famous, that have done something big, that have invented something, that have started a big, a big uh, company or organization, those people broke some rules to get there because some some organization wouldn't let them do this or that, and they just decided. I'm going to do it anyway because I believe in what my idea is, and so like it's. It's like society's rules that you break, not necessarily like going out and breaking the law on purpose because that's not something you should do. But then like, how do you tell, how do you tell, I didn't get so far into it where I was like, but there's also corporations and they're always ripping people off at all times. It's just like, I, you don't want to like tell an 11 year old all the truth of life, including, you know, that basically corporations and all these ads don't. <laughs> that don't care about you at all and just want your money yeah you might not want to but i i'm sure there's plenty of people that do tell their kids that it's it's totally I mean, like parenting you know how fucked up parenting is right like yeah. it's like it's like everybody's literally if they're a good person they love their kids and they're trying to do what's right in their own eyes which could be literally out of rebellion from their own parents and not doing it that way or it could be like i don't know it's all well it, it's always this it's always I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like that's what it always is. A hundred percent. We didn't realize that when we were kids <laughs> that our parents were just people. Yeah, totally. And it's like, oh yeah, they're like, I can't imagine what I was thinking. Yeah. What what I would be thinking about me as a dad, you know? But my kids love me, so I mean, I'm doing all right. But it's just crazy. I mean, everything's uh, everything's cyclical and and we all kind of go through the same things but just in new ways because of you know society and technology changing things but hmm. it's really to me i feel like uh everything that i ever went up against as a parent that that was totally outside of the box it was always like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and honestly now that i'm older i believe that none of those other people who were telling me what to do knew the fuck what they were doing of course either. they didn't and so that's the secret that's the dirty yeah. secret of life so it's an, it's one of those things like how do you want to instill values in your children and if you're a parent that goes completely the opposite way of of society norms there is always going to be some sort of repercussion that you're going to have to deal with yeah it might be that your kids are just pissed off for a season it might be something else but with the alex p keaton thing <laughs> family ties where he's yeah, the republican right. yeah because they're kind of hippies the parents yes. are hippies so 
Yeah, I mean, you're going to rebel in one way or another. If you're if your parents are conservative, you're going to be you're going to be you know not not conservative. conservative. You're probably going to be crazy. You're going to probably. be a punk rocker or whatever. Maybe. If you're uh, the opposite, you know, hippies, you might be a little more conservative. Yeah, to me, I think the biggest thing about um, like I got to remember who I was when I was their age as best as I can because it's totally fucking flawed for sure. Sure, but. But the best that I can, and then the the idea of was I doing the same kind of things, and then what? How would I like? Here, it's funny because I like I think the best thing that you can end up with with your kids in the end is that they're your friend. And so for me, I'm like, like, where's this thing to protect this kid until they're at least 18 years old? And how do I foster friendship within that? Well, I also don't want to like. I'm not gonna. I'm never going to be the parent who like, you know, like gives them alcohol or weed, like, you know, or something like that. Like, I'm just, I'm not even the parent that's like a totally open. Like, I don't really want their um, sexual partners staying the night. And if they, there is any fooling around happening or whatever, like it better be discreet where I know nothing about it and <laughs> I never will know anything about it. <laughs> yeah. It's basically like, a, um, so you're old fashioned. I am in some ways, in some ways. But in other but, ways, but what's old fashioned? Because like nowadays, like, there's a lot of kids that are more conservative than than their parents, right? So like, they're more old fashioned, but they're young, young fashion, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we just say that because that's where we grew up. That was the old fashioned thing to do is be more conservative. I'm also saying that with a a 21 year old daughter who's basically uh, she's. I have a granddaughter, and and so. Um, you know she's had sex. Yeah, but but also and 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 may, like the the baby's daddy, he lives with us basically most of the time to like because they you know we watch our granddaughter and take care of her. Well, mostly Teresa, my partner. She's like she's the one who mostly takes care of the granddaughter when they're at school because they're going to college. There, there's all these cool things about it that like. Um, I have no qualms about like it's great. So I know what's going on with them and whatever, but I'm still like kind of a little bit of a hard ass on that. And then my my other daughter, uh my 19-year-old daughter is uh you know, uh she's got a girlfriend and they were childhood friends. They started we were friends with their parents and everything and she, you know, she was spending the night since they were kids. So there is all these dynamics that happen. So when I say this stuff, it's yeah. not like I'm necessarily a hard ass. It's just in general, I kind of have these principles that are like, I freaking work like, you know, 40 to 70 hours a week or whatever to make ends meet. You guys aren't paying rent. There's nobody else fucking in my house. <laughs> There's just not like, like oh. unless you're an adult contributing to the money that goes involved with paying bills and all that, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really like, no, like be an adult and then, then we'll talk about. I'm it. not looking forward to <laughs> teen the the late teen years. Oh my gosh! I mean, if it's not one thing, it's going to be something else. So it's like, it just doesn't matter. It's yeah. coming as as a a parent, you're going to have situations come up with your kids. So. It's just crazy how many people aren't real about that. They actually think that they know what they're doing and that they can like, instead it's like, we're, we're going to follow this sort these sort of I'm principles doing. and these things. And so you might have a goal that you're working towards and yeah. that way you, yeah, you yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. know what you're doing, right? Like I follow doing what this. my wife says. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's how, how I know. know what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> that's a, that's a good way to know what you're doing. Yeah. It's really interesting. I, I think. All the ways, like, from unschooling to, like, uh, we did homeschool for a long time. And we were part of co-ops and all this stuff. And then when they entered high school, that's when the oldest two went. But the, the younger one was very much um, not into the homeschool co-ops. And the predominant ones that we were a part of were, like, affiliated still with, like, uh, Christianity in some ways. And so my youngest was, like, absolutely Thing to do that and she's like i want more diversity you know what's in interesting so she went to middle school we let her go oh, okay like, yeah what's interesting is in texas everything's religious yeah so it's just like normal but here if it's religious it's like oh it's religious so it's just like a different like it's more 
it's more serious or something up here if you're religious. But down there, it's just like you're Amer- you're American. You eat apple pie and you go to church, you know, or whatever. Yeah, my sister uh, was in Texas for a long time, and then they they're they're in Kentucky now. But um, I go and visit her, and that that's how it seems. And so it's it's funny because um, I know sort of that area too. Oftentimes, like blame blames like they call like trans and LBTG you know gay people and stuff they call them groomers or whatever sometimes like there's a there's a contingent on the right that does that okay and they're usually religious people and i'm like you know what like look at the statistics in 2024 i think there was 30 preachers or or like religious affiliated people there's a from lot churches that of molested preachers. children That's and so there was terrible. like seven people that were on some spectrum of being queer Mm-hmm. And um, the statistics in America, I think there's like 14 million or something like like people that are gay, trans, whatever, LGBTQ plus. Um, and there's 500,000 like religious clergy that are no, that are just just they exist. That they exist. Oh, okay. So okay. you're talking <laughs> these statistics for sexual abuse is more than three times the amount within the church clergy which is way way less than 10 times the amount of people that exist in that category so it's really weird to me the hypocrisy sort of i think this is bad to diddle children well yeah 100% yeah. doesn't matter where you stand on the political spectrum i'm just spectrum. telling you it's bad groomers are a bad thing groomers are a bad thing but indoctrination and grooming oftentimes happens in Absolutely. circles that are more um, I've heard more religious. about youth pastors getting caught touching kids than than anything. You know, youth pastors, yeah, Catholic priests, of course, of course. Yep. It's horrible. Um, and, and, and there's obviously weirdos going into women's bathrooms. That happens, too. It all happens. All the weirdness happens. And luckily, you don't have to really pay attention to it. Most of the time, unless you're like right in front of it. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I think you should pay attention to it. Why? I it's think it's like social sh- media. Let's talk about social media and like the influence it has on kids and how it destroys their attention span. Also adults, but it, it destroys their attention span, their, their uh, self-worth, their, you know, their dopamine levels and the fact that it makes dopamine not as it doesn't affect them as much. They get a. They get a. Yeah, you can watch documentaries about this. Yeah, I mean, I've watched there, there, a bunch. There's, there's mm. uh, definitely one on Netflix that I've watched. There's one on probably Amazon that I've watched. But um, all I'm saying is, influence does matter. Whether it's children on social media or <clears throat> anything, really. Like once you see well, something over and over, well, then who's going to regulate like, okay, that? Now if there's I'm gonna, no government. I don't think anybody should regulate it. I'm not saying the, you, the social media stuff. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I mean, that's the thing is like, if there's a government, I almost wish they would regulate some of that stuff other, rather than some of the stuff that they do regulate. They've so tried. It's not an easy thing because these one, these companies are huge. Mm-hmm. Part of the town square kind of deal. Like everybody, they're, goes they're to the them, ones paying the politicians. And they're to paying the politicians. <laughs> And at the same time I'm talking about social media, I'm on social media. And everybody that's talking about social media, you see them talking about social media on social media. Okay, here's the thing. Is it, <laughs> here, here, we go, get away. here we go back to another hypothetical of life that um, if you didn't have to... Um, Promote shows. Yeah, if you're talking into the if music you, If you didn't life. have to do those things... So, so there's a reason I think why we have to do those things. What things? But, uh, promotion, social media, all of it oh. has to do really around the society that we live in, which sure. is capitalistic. And so, in the end, you basically have to sell or hustle your time so that you can have those things that I said earlier were human rights. Mm-hmm. To me, that that that. That is a really well. It's bad, like, bad, he, bad, bad it's, place. It's almost like, but that's the whole world. The, the whole new, Western world. It's the new version of getting up in the morning and finding food, 
and building shelter, gathering wood. Now you, you got to get up in the morning and you go, okay, I'm going to, what am I posting on social media today? Or I'm going to make some Skrilla. Ta- you know, like, I, I guess it's obviously it's different for everybody. But for me, I'm not an influencer. I don't, I use social media just to tell people about my music. That's about, true. About, you know, my band, about what's going on. Uh, about my life too. I mean, that's true. I mean, this podcast is not about one thing. It's, it's everything. Um, but I don't consider myself an influencer and I try not to, you see videos you like, you're like, Oh, that's really cool. I wish I could do that. But I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to, I'm just going to do what I like to do and I'll find something that works eventually. Yeah, or yeah, I won't, yeah. or I won't, you know, I'm just going to keep posting the way I post and, and, and that doesn't mean I'm not going to try new things. But you're interesting because you're also, and I think a lot of people are this way too, that do that stuff is that you're trying new things. You're stretching yourself. You're doing creative projects and the whole thing becomes this whole, uh, sort of symbiotic thing with a lifestyle of doing a project and telling people about it and, and doing, doing some cool shit and telling people about it. it. It's, it's, it's a, I mean, this is why this, this whole dichotomy is it's so complicated. It's, it is really complicated because it involves human psyche and who we are as individuals, right? Like, so there's, I don't think that there's a huge morality with the social medias like a lot of like some people we were you mentioned it earlier about how it can damage there is studies on that how it damages people and it can but at Mm -hmm. the same time almost like everything in life um you have to bounce back like you have to get up and keep going and And there's balance and balance and and learn not be like on there eight hours 12 16 hours a day yeah like you don't do you know uh you don't work out 16 hours a day. You don't That's do good for LSD you. 16 hours a day. <laughs> right. like, like, I guess maybe you do fentanyl that much if you're fentanyl. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that Thimble. looks like. But, but that, that like, uh, yeah, it's kind of one of those things. Like, uh, there's so much nuance no, there's in our always, society and it's complicated. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like you could poo-poo something and then be like, well, I actually use, I use the government that, I, I by no choice, by the way, but, like, I use the government that I hate for a lot of things yeah but i also do pay my taxes i do a too. lot of taxes what's crazy Ooh. is this last year like i thought for sure that i was going to be um screwed because there was some tax laws that had changed because of it was the, the time for them to change but whatever happened for the first time in a long time i'm getting a very small uh return which is crazy. nice hell yeah <laughs> i'm like what the hell how'd that happen tax returns the best it is nice when you get get a little bit back instead of having to pay it also means you made less money so you're like i guess i'm happy but i'm also or (laughs) in all all honesty i think it's literally because (laughs) you wrote off more things yeah because i did 90 pound wuss again and i spent a lot of money personally to get like you know like we tried to get the original keyboard that we had on um you know, shorthand operation. So I could use those exact same tones. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anything at that time about like how much things had progressed digitally and in the, the, the world of VCTs and, or VST, whatever, like plug plugins and all that shit. Um, so the first thing I did was, you know, buy a keyboard keyboard came broken, went to get it fixed, broken (laughs) to get it fixed again. Like there was that, there was like, a we, we did, we did a lot I I ended up hiring actual artists myself to um, design the shirts and stuff that we had because I I did I wasn't like going to have friends do it at this point in my life I'm like no there's good designers that do stuff that I respect let's let me talk to them and I'll pay for it out of my pocket what so there's all these things and then Dry Bones we I I we released the record as Dry Bones um, me and a guy named Joe yeah and. Uh, it's hard to make money on records. Like it's hard to make money because yeah, that it costs was a big so yeah. much. I still have a stack of them at home. So if anybody wants one, you can you can look up drybnz.com and I think it'll go to a link that you can buy right. Dry now. bones everybody. Post industrial It's some noise rock. Yeah, some noise weird like electronic bizarre. Yeah. Kind of gothy, kind of industrial, but definitely noisy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you'll you'll get some 
some German guy that's like, that's my favorite <laughs> band in the world, Dry Bones. Yeah, we, we I, I yell a lot in that, that yeah. It was fun. Oh, yes. it, was, it was nice, though. That was all me sort of processing the religious trauma that I experienced um, when that all went down. So that was record was really good for my mental health to like sort of make that thing. And then it took about, eight years from beginning to end to actually do something with it. Cause both me and the other guy who w we did that band together were um, in various phases in our life of whatever was going on with us in our heads so that it wasn't, we weren't highly motivated to finish it. So I'm right. glad we actually did something and there's this like end thing. Like here's this record that we pressed and this thing you can see and hold. Yeah. It's, it's fucking rad. Like I, I love that aspect about making music that, um, you can have this thing that one, it's documented. It's done. I love that these it's documented. Years That's of my these things are done. Like this it. is done. This is a song we might play it live differently, and we might add. It doesn't stuff matter. Or change it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But this thing is the. This is the thing. That's what I love is like having the document, just like you said. That that's that's a perfect way to say it because it is about the songs. Of course, I want I want good quality music to release and i want people to love it and all that but i just want to be like okay this album we made this cool and it's on the shelf and it's just like in a succession of albums there's some weird it feels good fetish that i like you know it's just, I, 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 I it think feels a lot good. of people like, feel that. as a record collector it's kind of like yeah of course i would i want i want my own record collection you know of, of things that i've worked on or worked on with people so that's real. Uh, so motivation. Um you find you found your motivation again to at least make songs. I don't make know what's going to happen with them, but it, but that's okay, yeah. right? So like you what's important to you is to create it, not so much to be the be a big band and to like have a career in music all the time, but you just want to create Yeah, I want to make some stuff and and put it out for people to um knock Love, but if you whatever if, they if do everyone happens to buy a record and you sell out and you just keep selling well, then hopefully that's cool too. Be, hopefully i'll be able to keep making music that'd be, that'd that'd be, be that would be that and, would and be then the play live more that's the other thing that doesn't happen as much because uh maybe people that aren't in bands don't realize it but if you're in a band in a city um there's really no place to play so you have to pay money so you have to work to make money to pay money to somebody else so that you can have a spot that you probably share with one or two other bands and it's not even an ideal scenario that's very comfortable. Yeah. It's usually small and it kind of kind of stinky and like everybody shits in there. So like they don't literally crap. We there. are blessed. Their stuff is in there to have yeah. this place because it's outside. It's it's in Bremerton, but yeah, it's our place. We don't really have. I mean, I used to have a lot of bands come in and out, but like mostly it's it's just us here. You know, the last really the last three or four years, it's mostly just been us. Um, and just we can experiment we can tear things apart and we can leave it overnight no one's going to come in here and 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 mess with things just the ghost yeah the ghost for sure <laughs> that's a whole other story <laughs> i won't get into that anyway um yeah i mean it's got to be tough being being in the city especially these days when you're 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 an adult you're not some kid that can just kind of just get in where you fit in. Uh, you kind of have to, budgets go up. Uh, the older you get, the but the more up, the budgets yeah. go up, and I, I just think it's just life in general. Well, with <laughs> good, <laughs> sorry, good, good. no, that's don't be sorry. That budgets was great. Are going up. So. Well, in regard to that, the one thing that's going down is um, the way that you can produce music on your own. Yes, is yes such. In a really good spot. So how it's been working now, uh, writing demos for, um, it looks like there's, well, here's the interesting thing. I don't care. There's some songs that are definitely more suffering in the hideous thieves oriented and some songs more 90 pound wuss. The 90 pound wuss ones that are 90 pound wuss are obvious. There's some that are a real crossover. And what do we do if 90 pound wuss is going to make another record? I've been writing all these demos and some of them are all over the map. There's one for sure. That's like dry bones, not that stuff. Yeah. Now, that one is obvious like that. That won't be used for either one, but 
the thing is about suffering in the hideous thieves too it was my band and i put it together and the musicians changed there was people from blood brothers botch like uh not botch nobody in botch was ever it. sorry scratch that blood brothers minus the bear okay um yeah. there, there was there was a lot of people in different bands like that i was friends with that came and played in my band for a period of time the prom um all these people but um there, so there was probably like 30 or 40 hideous thieves over the years. And then at the end, it kind of became more of a collaborative project for the last record that we did. But the other stuff was always my songwriting or like one person had brought something and then I sort of arranged it and tweaked it. Um, and so that band could actually do stuff again if we want. Like I can do whatever I want with that. That's my band. You um, just AI it. Be like, just put in a, yeah, totally. a, a suffering in the hideous thieves song and be like, doop make yeah. another one <laughs> but the funny thing is is what i'm saying is there, there's these songs that so that was sort of how i was writing songs yeah. for a long time i think i did more records with that band than with 90 pound right and so there's this cool resurgence and vibe that i have that's connected to my past as well as the current like punk scene in a way that when i was doing sort of like I always thought of it as punk rock personally, but like when I was doing a little bit more like indie rock sort of sounding stuff and like kind of dark sounding stuff, those are now blended. Like I was telling you earlier, like I don't really give a, give a crap. Like all that stuff comes into play. Sure. But the question is then what do I do with it once it comes into play and I'm writing these songs and all of a sudden it sounds like hideous thieves, but then it's got a da, 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 da. It goes really fast and ends with like some crazy chaotic punk thing. It's like, well, is this a hideous Steve song or is this a 90 pound wuss song? Like it's totally right, strange. Right. So there's a few of those going on, but mm -hmm. um, in general, the 90 pound wuss songs are obvious. And the question is, what do I do with those things? Like who's going to, are, are we going to just put them out ourselves and finish it and like uh, be done with 90 pound wuss or are we going to keep, should we keep I, I don't doing think it? you I need to know. decide. I think honestly, we live in a world where people, they make statements and then they change their mind. Yeah, totally. So like, uh, I mean, you could just, yeah, whatever you want to do. Have a lot of freedom though. If you, if you want to quit, quit and then come back. Yeah, come back again. Do, do like, Amber Lynn, like Amber Lynn did. <laughs> <laughs> I, so many bands have done it. I mean, not just yeah. Amber Lynn. Um, I, either way, like, homies. the cool thing has been making music. That That's what it is, like reconnecting yeah. to that muse that's inside of you. Um when you get this time away from it, it gives like this new perspective. And so I have this new perspective that's different yeah. than it was. Then. Are you, are you going in and like making a beat and then like playing to that and like singing to that? Or are you playing with a drummer? I've no, there's no drummer. No. It's, it's all, usually it's a bass line. That's, okay. that's the majority of the time I've made songs. It starts with me playing bass and then with a click track and then, uh, Turns into guitar, some vocal ideas. Um, there's a few exceptions to that. Recently, I decided, um, so with, with new drum VSTs, you can like uh, download whatever you, you buy them. And you can, sure. you can buy all these like uh, beats that somebody has made from a real drum. Oh, uh, okay. So, sound it like sounds, this. so it's like real. two measures of like a... Uh, like a da 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 or something like that yeah. that sounds like you know and and then in within the program you can tweak the um volumes of each thing and the some some of the tone options but either way so re the the last last week was the first time i started i st actually started with a drum beat i was like okay this drum beat let's this is this is a weird drum beat i don't know if i'd ever do anything let's put this in but the cool thing is is with like Ableton is what I use, Ableton mm -hmm. Live uh, 12. Um, the sweet version that it comes with has amps, and the, you can you can basically cho then choose a cabinet from the amp that you choose, and then choose a mic configuration on right. that cabinet. And so you end up with this, like, re and then each one has the tone knobs from the amp or whatever. So you end up with this uh, fake amp, that to me sounds better than any gear I've ever owned. So <laughs> like, like <laughs> right. instantly that's inspiring. Yeah. That's so, cool. so suddenly I have this drum beat that some pro or like wannabe pro drummer like recorded. That's better than what I could record or, or do via MIDI. Sure. And so, um, it is MIDI still it's, it's yeah. usually a MIDI beat, but, um, 
they have samples real. that are that are more real. Yeah. So um, I'm just playing over this thing, creating some. And the way Ableton works um, is more my brain sort of thinking. You re, you can record in clips. One of the option is, and so it's like you repeat that drum bar over and over, and then you just decide. Okay, you play over it, and then come up with a riff, and then you just hit record, crop your clip. And then there it is. It fits perfectly within that thing. And then you can add, you know, I want that riff to play three times in the, the song. So when you go to the arrangement mode, which is more like, looks more like Pro Tools or like Logic or whatever, you then um, just arrange those clips, pull them up how you like. Mm-hmm. And so for me, that's that's how I've been making demos. So you right? can experiment yeah. really easily with ideas. Exactly. And- they're, not, they're not real songs that I'm going to release as is. Sure. But the crazy thing is, is that the demos sound better than any demos I've ever made in my life by doing like a four track or whatever. They're just sound way better. Oh yeah. And and so that alone and my vocals. So I have a, the only place I can really do vocals. I have like a, you know, just a regular, like cheap condenser mic and Mm -hmm. whatever. But I, I came up with a compressor sort of layout for it that i think sounds good with the compressor it compresses my vocals the way i want there's a little bit of reverb and a little slap back which is kind of how i've come to like the way i sound yeah. um because my voice is so raw and it's always been so gnarly that a little bit of tweaking to it makes uh, to me makes me sound better but who knows what'll happen when they get finished but anyways so i do that but i'm singing literally like these ideas in a bedroom in my house well like I said, there's a lot. There's quite a number of people that live at my house right now in my family. So, um, yeah. so I usually just do one-off vocal takes. So I really do consider these demos because they're more the idea of the vocal. They're definitely way from being perfected. They don't even totally sound good. But it, it's what's interesting is it still sounds like. I'm I'm still like even my vocals like that's the only thing now at this point after we tweak these demos a little bit because then I go over to my buddy the guitar player ninety pound was Colin's house mm-hmm. I go over to his house he has Logic I've sent him already the wave files he downloads it and he's got a better drummer drum plug in he's got like he's got a uh, one of those Kemplers Kem- or whatever Kemper. yeah, yeah. Kempers he's got one of those and he's got better like amp VSTs so he makes. He then learns sort of the parts I wrote. We talk about it. He sort of tweaks them. And so it's weird. I've been writing basically, I think I've been writing a 90-pound Wuss record completely by myself, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. And then then Collins helped me make it better. Sure. So hopefully once they, all the guys have heard the songs and most of it's positive feedback, but once they, we get time to sort of work together on them, I think that it'll even be cooler. Like, yeah, I think better. yeah. When you can find a good workflow for a record, it really com- comes together because you can get bogged down in the technical parts of you know just getting the ideas down and stuff. Whereas if you find something you like like that, you don't have to worry about that. You just like kind of have fun with it. You're like discovering cool things because of the process. Yeah, that's what you want. Discover because of the process. Not totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that's where I'm at is like this point of like getting the ideas down and discovering all these different things. But like I said, it's leading to a whole nother level of creativity that's doing like, like I did a dry bone song, which doesn't even fit in, in that mix. And like, I knew like, that's for that. Yeah. Uh, instantly, like I kind of like, I kind of know where I'm at, but the weird thing is the crossover. Like, I don't know. There's some stuff that's like more mid and slow tempo that all the guys in 90 pound wuss really like so maybe we'll tweak those and there'll be 90 pound wuss songs i don't know i think uh the also the cool thing is my connection like you know i've always been a um i've always liked pop music right i like the cure i like morrissey like even though i pay, played like this like crusty or obscure art stuff like i still like some pop songs and um and always have and so it, it's a uh, it's cool because i, I don't really like if I write a song and it has like these hooks and these melodies that are, um, I don't feel like it has to fit in to anything. Like it can be that. And then the end could totally change and sound like freaking like the crustiest thing you ever heard or whatever. <laughs> like it, yeah. I was thinking maybe you should try doing some like hardcore breakdown, do like 
oh, 90 pound whistle <laughs> hardcore version it's so popular these days like if you did a few songs that had that you know a little more lean that way that might just like perk people up i don't know the we'll kids, see the kids the kids love it uh, all right colin it, definitely is into like, it yeah like, yeah he's he's he he grew up listening to youth of today and like oh uh, yeah judge and all yeah, that, that stuff. that's yeah. great exactly. yeah very cool all right dude thanks for coming by totally. is there anything else uh i know we're, we this was just honestly fun to have just a conversation about everything and creativity and it's been it's been a really fun like a part of the encouragement has been you encouraging me like in being there like as a friend and like reconnecting has been a big thing that's really helped me be creative again and so yeah man i appreciate it that's why it's funny like when we were talking about you being positive or not positive like whatever i'm like <laughs> yeah dude like all i know from my career is like he's like yeah make some stuff dude oh that's great make some more like you're just really encouraging so thank you totally positive yeah you're welcome love it jeff Bedker, everyone 